And welcome to High 45, a weekly discussion about the future impact of this week's world and tech news leading towards a singularity. I'm Tristan Graves. I'm Nathan Waters. This is High 45. Yeah. Episode 25? 25. 25. No. <laughs> it doesn't no gangster this week. No oh, gangster. Okay, okay. Please. It's fun. Cool. What have we got this week? Uh, lots of cool stuff, actually. Uh, big one is that the, the Indian government announced a $35 tablet. Kind of. That's pretty cool. Kind of. Uh, Aussies are selling Terminator robots to US Marines. God, I hate Australian media. <laughs> nice title. It's a great title. Uh, and then the next one, it's just lots of little cool stories. So uh, we'll get to those. Just a wait, wait, wait. quick flash of all of them. Uh, no, no, no. Th- th- those are my ones. That's my next story. Oh, you got more? Okay. Just really quick, really quick short stories, which are cool. And we got radio waves being used as a uh, power source. Who? And. Oh, singularity topic. Oh, it's man, you guys are going to love this one. Yes. We just. Oh. oh. We just had an idea epiphany, like just half an hour before this as well. We were talking about it. We were like pacing around waiting for the train to go by. Yeah. It was okay. about the attention economy, by the way. Yes. So we're going to speak about <laughs> singularity. <laughs> it's so amazing. It's what the is ball. It? What is it? What is it? It's the attention economy. So wait for that. It's going to be yeah. great. We're going to discuss it. There's uh, lots of cool things there. Cool. Great. You and uh, who's? Um, you can start if you want. Okay. I mostly picked this because it's an Australian story, but it's still pretty cool. It's got Terminators in it. Okay, uh, Team Sydney scientists has just secured a $57 million contract to supply robots to the US Marine Corps. Sweet! It's pretty cool. And, I mean, it, it, it's cool, but they, they put these, like, okay, they've got these essentially robots on segways, and they've put them in hoodies <laughs> to make them seem on, ominous. And like youth gangs. Yeah. <laughs> it is, literally. It's like small to youth gangs, and it's these, <laughs> it's these military, like, guys with sniper rifles just taking shots at them. God. Do they actually have the skin like they have just on the cover I can see on the screen there? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, they have a, a Terminator face. Oh, Jesus. And they're calling them like Terminators. <laughs> I think so, that... <laughs> Australian scientists are supplying Terminators to the US. That's kind, of, that's kind of cool. Pretty much. I think it's just a marketing. I mean, look at the title. Oh, okay, for sure. Aussies sell Terminator robots to US Marines. Well, it's not even really a lot of money. Like 57 million. It's a lot for Australia, for an Australian company. But not for military, not for robots wise. Yes. But, but for Australian they, companies, it's pretty cool. He's running next to it. Yeah, and they use like swarm intelligence. So basically, um, they're using them for training. So they run around. They can run up to fourteen kilometers uh, per hour, I think, which is pretty fast. Um, or move at fourteen kilometers per hour. Okay. And if you actually, if you take one out with a sniper rifle, the others uh, are aware of it and they scatter. <laughs> so it's good. For, it's good for target practice. That's what they're actually buying it for. Like you know. Oh, target. right, so they're, they're yeah, not being used target. to like attack people, they're just like random target. No, no, yeah, they're just guys on segways. Oh, okay, cool. But they're thinking of giving them weapons later on. Ah, see, that's kind of cool. Robots like it. weapons on segways. Motorized segways. Uh, <laughs> militarized segways. Yeah. See, that was always the plan, he said it revolutionized the world. <laughs> that's how. Oh man, so much for waiting for the other train. And there must be trains going past like every five minutes here. I don't know, it's bizarre. Supplying coal to our steel. I like how steel city. city. They've got plumes of fun. Yeah. So what do you got? Uh, my one is... Ooh, you may have heard about this. It is the Indian government announced the $35 tablet. And uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Like to uh, send out to schools and all of that. Like it's $35 and it's a touchscreen tablet. Like, you know, it's 7 inch, so it's pretty tiny. Yeah, pretty that's seven what inch. she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, it's... Uh, that, that, that's pretty much the story there, but... You delve a little bit deeper into it, and it doesn't seem that good. It doesn't seem like it's going to happen. It seems a bit hyped. It was getting there. Yeah. It said the um, the materials actually cost forty seven dollars. That's the official thing by the government. They At said the that, moment. Yeah, that's what they they hope to get down to thirty five dollars by it. But then there was this pretty cool article that um, I read by um, I, I've never seen these guys. CIO.com.au, um, apparently for chief investment officers in Australia. So you know, very large target market. Um, and the article is just about saying how uh, the, the Indian government does this a lot, that there's actually been two other tablets uh, that happened like that before. Right. One of them was called the Simputer, which was again announced and said it was going to revolutionize and you know, get computers out to um, like, you know, all developing places in India and all of that. Yeah. They said they uh, hoped to have uh, 50,000 units sold in 2005 and they'd only sold 4,000. And apparently even before that, uh, in 1999, there was another one, which... Uh, Forget what it is right here. I can't seem to find what it's called, but yeah, they said they announced another one. But let's be optimistic. 
Uh, yeah. How cool would it be if you had a thirty-five dollar tablet? And the guy was like, in the actual video, he was saying, "Oh, you know, but I'll be down to twenty dollars, ten dollars." Yeah, but I, I don't see how. Like, they, they make good points. And I mean, two gigs of RAM is what they're quoting in here, and yeah. a, a seven-inch touchscreen and all of that. It's running Android, so the software costs are the super, Yeah, software costs. We, let's like get rid of them, but the the rest of it is a lot because it, India has like a little bit of manufacturing, but they don't have like two gigs of RAM. They could outsource it to China. But then China could make an even cheaper laptop, and that seems yeah. really cheap. But that's, that's very true. It's, it's, kind of, it's hard to go to that. Hopefully, like, scalability, if you, you, if you produce, like, a couple of million of these devices yeah, per true. year, then it'll be a lot cheaper. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's, let's, like, let's assume that it mm. does happen, all that, because that is going to happen at some point, that there is going to be, like, a little thing that's touchscreen. Yeah. Tablety. Well, so you, like, you love the idea of having touchscreen devices everywhere. So. I do. I think it's great. And so if, you, if they're down to this price, it's brilliant. Oh, especially for the one laptop a child thing. Um, like they were what a year or a few years back, they were, they were trying to do the ninety nine dollar laptop, and they went about the wrong way. They're actually they're reformulating their strategy now, and they're actually focusing on, on, on the touch tablets. Screen. Yeah, well, they, they, that was running Android again. He brought it up on this again that they're saying that they still can't get the cost of one laptop per child down to a hundred dollars. But you, you're right, I'm being very negative with this story. It's just yeah. I'm, I'm so excited because I really like the want... prices will be at that level. Yeah, it's just a matter of when. So I'd, I'd love to have like thirty five dollar tablets. Get like say ten of them, just scatter it around. And you just pick them up, like, and you just go, oh, cool, look at this. And, yeah. Like pictures. You mail it to people. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Maybe you just take pictures with it, or you do a quick video, then you chuck it in the post and send it down, because, you know, got that old-timey feel rather than giving the link the on YouTube. The old-timey feel. Old-timey feel. It feels special. <laughs> wow. You just got to connect to that 3G and, you know, yeah, and then DNS settings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Love to do. Yeah, but it, this is pretty cool. Hopefully it, it hopefully goes somewhere. I, I, I really am hoping, but... I, I don't think it is. I don't think it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Fair well, enough. not yet. Well, this is putting pressure on it to happen. Well, that's it. It's probably near an election or something like that. They're like, hey, check it out. <laughs> anyway. Cool. Uh, what's uh, your one? My story uh, is about uh, using radio waves as an actual low power source. Mm. So replacing batteries and for devices that don't require a lot of power, just a small amount. You can actually power them on uh, general radio waves, like from you know your your local music radio station, yeah, or your Wi-Fi or whatever other sort of radio waves you got happening around the place. Um, they don't explain how it works. I read two articles now. Doesn't explain how it works. I'm guessing there's some simple magic, magic going <laughs> on. <laughs> That's probably just the same as the whole wireless power thing, where you got like a yeah maybe it's vibrating something a magnet generating a magnetic field and stop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is cool because it, uh, it's an awesome, awesome thing. Uh, the, yeah, the, the smart hat. It's yeah, they they the uh, got this thing called a smart hat, um, which they're using in uh, like in in construct in construction sites, so that you'd have a, like, actually a, a hard hat with one of these devices in it that doesn't require batteries. And you'd have a transmitter um, in one of, in the bulldozers, and so what it does is it transmits um, you know back and forth information, and you can work out how close the hard hat is to the bulldozer. So if it gets too close, it warns you, like with a you know buzzer and a light or whatever, and you can actually power the hard hats with just these devices that work that generate their energy off the radio waves of the transmitter. So it's just so, so reliable. Yeah, so it doesn't need batteries. You don't have to worry about the safety issue of having to replace the mm -hmm. batteries and. There's so, so yeah. much just cool, like, low cost, a, a low, yeah. what's they want to say called, like, low power items around and stuff. Well, do what you are saying before that, like, something about, um, how much was this calculator, the solar power calculator, like, there? Oh, yeah, yeah, um, he was saying that these devices can produce about 50 microwatts of DC power, mm. and a calculator, a solar power calculator typically, uh, uses about 5 microwatts, or generates about 5 <laughs> microwatts. Awesome. So it, it could, yeah. It could, it could generate, it could power like, you know, all these biosensors that we're having. I wonder if you could have it in your house. Like, just have it around and stuff, like clocks. Yep. Like, clocks would be the same. Powered by your Wi Fi. Yeah. Cool. Just have a nice, cool transmitter. Like, I mean, it's, it's little power, but I mean, the very fact you can have all these things just working very basically. Like, if you could have, say, I won't say 10, um, you know, calculators, because that'd be like perfect efficiency, but even like, say, two or three, just coming out of the one thing there, that it's free power. Yeah, like free power. Tesla tried that. Yeah. Free power Lightning. for the masses. Lightning. <laughs> cool. What else you got? Mm. Okay. These ones are fun. This is I'm just going to breeze through. Yeah. Because I want to get to topic. Yes. Okay. Before I forget away. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
First one, really cool thing, is they've got a uh, Fits Me fitting virtual robot. It's 11 seconds, so check it out. Dun, 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 dun. It is really cool, look at it go. And uh, yeah, I just think this is really cool. They've got a robot where you can wear, and it, you say you want to put on a shirt, and it actually molds itself to your body. I like that. I was, I was trying to buy clothes today, and I was like, oh, well, I don't know what these look like. There we go, okay. buy a robot. Okay, I don't see the practical use, but anyway. Buying clothes online. Oh! Yeah. So that's, yeah. That's why it's called Virtual Fitting Room Robot. Oh, so you put in your dimensions and it shapes itself and yeah. see, you can see, oh, those clothes would fit You me. see how it actually looks on you. Yeah, that's pretty So you measure cool. yourself, like, perfectly. That's pretty cool. I didn't think of that. Next one is... Oh, yeah, the, uh, the Russians are now putting a lot of money into developing a new uh, spaceport. So that's kind of cool. And uh, along that same line, the Virgin Atlantic, uh, Virgin Galactic has yeah. just actually did their first successful test flight. Of a uh, spaceship two, yeah. spaceship two, yes. So that's kind of yeah. awesome. Yeah. And uh, the last one was this awesome hologram video. We should make a little clip of or something. They weren't, they weren't holograms. They weren't real holograms. No, they were like you know the cool video, though. weird effect. But it was awesome. Like we were saying last week, there's not many practical uses cool. for it. But yeah, definitely check out. The, I thought that they were, it was a great video. Just yeah, some nice holograms going around. Go to play with it. See you later, shop back. Oh, it's fun. This week is the attention economy. So, what the f is the t attention economy? I didn't swear then, that was not nice. Yeah. I didn't bleed myself out, I did it normally. <laughs> um, okay, so the idea is, shall I, here I go, go through it. Um, the economy works really well at the moment, like the real world economy, because of scarcity. Like if you've ever done economics, it, That's it the works on- first order. principle. Yeah, you have scarcity and then that generates supply and demand. Yeah. Well, it generates the conditions for supply and yeah, demand. Yeah, it's a, Contributing yep. resources based on scarcity because everyone yep. wants everything. Yeah, and you can't. And, you and can't. that system it works pretty as a whole pretty brilliantly. Like yeah, you yeah. have you Phenomenal. have you know Jesus. lots of you know unequal distribution of wealth and all sorts of horribleness that comes out of it. Um, but yeah, um, generally it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, how do you do a similar thing um, to with, with information? Yeah, with abundance in, in the data. Yeah. yeah. Because we're now in the, instead of going from scarcity economy, we're like getting into one of abundance where you can actually have like infinite amounts of knowledge yeah, because it can be copied millions and billions and trillions of times. Yeah. Because, yeah. And the reason why an economy, an information economy would be brilliant is because it routes information to where it's needed most. Yeah. Much like how the economy routes resources where it's needed the most. Yeah. And a, a good information economy would do that. But where do you generate the scarcity from? Yeah, how, how do you actually have it? So, the, the concept is, the scarcity is in the attention you can actually give to that uh, information. So humans are only, you know, potentially, like, theoretically able to consume 24 hours mm. of information per it's, day. Yeah, there's even a way of thinking about it that there's, uh, think about it as like as human computational power, that there's only so much yeah. like stuff we could compute each day. That is the very scarcity factor, so say all information's yeah. free. You're getting fed a ton of information. There's only so much thinking. I guess that's a better word than computing. There's only so much thinking you can do in a day. And so then that becomes a scarcity in an, an economy of abundance. Yeah. Yeah. And so then that's uh, the route to there because that's what we were talking about last week about, you know, nano robots and making everything free and it all being just like you imagine something and you want it. Yeah. How would the world, like that destroys all economic models and everything pretty yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where you have to come yeah. into that. What model is going to be around for abundance? The and I guess this, the, why why the attention economy? You uh, explain that. Like I think potentially the, the physical economy, like it's built on this idea of infinite growth, which cannot be maintained. No, well, not with physical goods. No, it's going to crash and burn at some point. So we need something to replace it and you relatively quickly. As yeah, and and you we can, can do it now. Infinite growth with knowledge. Yeah. Is uh, yeah information, information just being processed again and again and again it, and again? It's been growing exponentially ever since it was yeah. Well, the internet particularly. Yeah, and well, that's <laughs> why I think it's so important that is as we actually get into that part of uh, more and more things are becoming this free, this abundant that you can just replace. Like anything we can digitize, that becomes abundant. Yeah. yeah, and then all that really matters is the creativity and all the processing power going into it. Yeah, and so then the attention economy, and this is where it gets into really fun. You can start having all of these really elaborate models and really cool slow down. things. Give it slow. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, no. you speak too fast. Don't, don't. <laughs>